Um, hello, my name is Mike. Uh, I'm going to be reading these. Um, so, so this talk is about uh, websites and web browsers and bad jokes. That's my LinkedIn resume. Um, I, I lied to the guy from Walmart Labs and I said I didn't have a LinkedIn account to get a free shirt. Sorry about that. Um, so, you know, full disclosure, right? Um, so a little bit about me, I, I develop um, really useful web applications. This is one I built, it's called the Must Die Generator. Um, so Douglas Crockford, he doesn't have to like create these slides every time. Um, Dom6 is the worst, right? So um, one thing I wanted to show off, this is like a new feature, is it's responsive. So if you go here, bam. That's right. Thank you. Any questions? Um, and now you're going to be bored for 28 minutes. Uh, where am I at? OK. So uh, also, uh, .biz.info is, is a business. It's a startup. We're trying to pivot from this default landing page. Um, but uh, yeah, get with me if you've got any ideas. I just bought this. It's pretty, pretty sweet. So, so enough with the jokes. Here's, here's what I really do. I'm on the web compatibility team at Mozilla. and. Um, that's a bunch of other people that aren't here. Um, Leo is actually somewhere in this building, a uh, guy from Rio uh, who helps us out in Brazil. So what we do is we open the web. I'm also a graphic designer. Um, you, can, you can hit my LinkedIn for, uh, we can connect and I'll do some work for you. Um, but the open web, like what is that and why is that important? I, I imagine everyone here has some sense of what the open web means, what it should mean. Um, here's, here's a great definition that I won't read, but I'll try to remember what it says. But essentially, open web is this collection of royalty-free technologies um, that are specified by some standards body. And in theory, anyone can implement these without getting their pants sued off. Um, and in theory, they're interoperable, right? So we just HTTP the DOM, APIs, JavaScript, ECMAScript, whatever, CSS. These are all specified, and if you wanted to make a web browser tomorrow, um, you should be able to just read these specs, implement them, and everything should just work in theory, right? This is the promise of the open web. Um, so what does that have to do with web compatibility? Compatibility? We'll find out. Um, so so this, is, this is Walmart.com years ago, right? Um, and this was a video download shot, and it says, I'm sorry, you, you, you can see someone tried to visit this in Safari, and it says, this requires IE6. All right, I'm sure you all remember this site best optimized for, for IE whatever. Um, and so this is partially what web compatibility is about, right? It's about not blocking browsers that we don't like or whatever. <laughs> I mean, this isn't really an ancient problem, right? So this. Walmart.com, I don't know what year this was. Let's imagine this is like 2002. Um, so this is something that's really recent, right? This is a, a Chrome mobile experiment, and so you hit this in your, your favorite mobile browser, and then Google tells you that you're not awesome, and you feel a little sad. Um, so, so, but that's, that's really not all there is, right? So that's maybe user agent sniffing or whatever. Um, but what this talk is about is uh, crazy bugs, right? So um, if you don't enjoy that, you should probably go to the other talk, whatever they're talking about. Um, these are more original art pieces uh, I've done. So, so let's talk a little bit about what that means. So the web legacy. Um, so people have been making web pages for a really long time. Um, and web browsers today have to support that old content. Um, just recently, there was uh, some conversation on Twitter and some of the, uh, the Chromium developer mailing lists about removing document.all. Raise your hand if you've ever used document.all. OK, so you guys are part of the problem. Um, it's OK, because I'm sure that was 10 years ago, right? So in theory, we want to remove these really old DOM APIs, 
because we want the platform to be smaller. We want our browsers to be less complicated, and we don't want to maintain old code. Um, but it turns out that that's just not possible. There's too many sites depending on that right now. Um, so user agent strings are, are kind of part of this, uh, of this history. And, and it's kind of fun to look at them. Um, it's, it's fun to do crazy things with them. Like Alex said, you can, you can put script tags in here, and you can break a lot of sites. Um, but if we look, we look at Mozilla 1.0. This, this might be kind of small to read. Um, but you can, you can see the history of web browsers, right? You have um, Mozilla 1.2.2, and then it says, hey, we're actually compatible with MSIE, because probably as soon as, Microsoft, as soon as IE2 came out, whatever site was blocking Mozilla, so they put in that string, and they said, just kidding, we're kind of like IE. Um, and, and all the browsers do this. And so these are the modern user agent strings, which the, the bottom one is my favorite. Um, that, does anyone know what that is? Ya yeah, browser? Of course, right? That's the Yandex browser. Does anyone know what Yandex is? Two guys in the back, right? So this is a, oh, sorry, five individuals in this room. So this is the, uh, the largest search engine in Russia and Eastern Europe, right? They're as big as Google, essentially. And they have their own fork of uh, Chromium. Um, but everyone is pretending to be everyone else just so they can get web pages to work. Um, and I have, I have this project on GitHub called Snort, where it's not a project, right? I mean, it's, it's my style of project where I copy and paste things and commit it. Um, so you can go look at that, and it's filled with these crazy UA sniffing things that are fun um, to look at and imagine the ways that they can break. OK, so take a look at this, and we're going we're gonna to pause on that for like 15 seconds. And someone can tell me, how could this break? OK. I have a hand in the back. Right, so if, if your browser version, if your app version was 11, car at zero, or char, however that's pronounced, um, that's going to take the very first digit, right, or string. Um, and so that browser version suddenly will be version one, right? And so then you'll go, go back to this Walmart page, and you'll say, like, oh, you need IE6. And you're like, but I'm using IE11. Um, so this is a fun one that we ran into recently. Is, is, uh, this is real code from a website. A Firefox user reported this. They're trying to use this uh, Vidly service. And they're only getting MP4 bugs. And this is the code. And so it's really similar. If, if you, this is what happens as browser versions go on, right? Like when you wrote this, you never imagined that Firefox 4 would ever be a real thing. Um, because it took years for browser versions to be released, and, and now it's every six weeks. Um, and Firefox 300 will come in your lifetime. I hope to be dead. Um, I don't know why. That's a really dark way to present this information. Sorry, guys. Um, so, so the bug here is Firefox on certain platforms does not support MP4, right? That, uh, that MP4 support is platform independent right now, um, depending on the codecs that are available to the operating system. So it's sometimes a bug, sometimes not a bug, depending on which, uh, which update you're on. Um, OK, so that's kind of like the easy part of web compatibility, is just like looking at code that's sniffing for user agent strings. Um, that's really easy to tell that that's broken. It gets a little bit crazier. Um, as you know, as you explore the web platform. So there's this spec um, that a friend maintains, Matthias, uh, called Web ECMAScript, right? So this is a specification of all the things that you have to support to, I guess, render the web, right? This, so these are deviations from the ECMAScript specs that, that the ECMA body produces. Um, and this makes them angry, or at least Rick Waldron. but. Everything makes Rick Waldron angry. Um, so for example, did you know there's a, there's a blink prototype method on the string object? So if you have your developer console open right now, you can do like, well, I guess I could do that, right? It's kind of small, but I can say like lol.blink. And that returns a string wrapped in a blink element, 
Um, these are really cool additions that Microsoft added to the web. Um, and I mean, that's not a, a dig at Microsoft. All browsers do this. They, they add these interesting things, and then later everyone else has to support them because like suddenly chase.com depends on string prototype blink. Um, it might be true. It's probably not. Um, so that's one aspect of web compatibility is just like finding all this kind of non-standard information that browsers support and trying to be compatible with it. Um, but this, this is my favorite part. So, so part of my job is really just to like look at broken things and hopefully figure out why they're broken. Um, and uh, it's fun. So uh, let's look at some DOM problems. Uh, that's not a typo, right? So, uh, so here is something that's weird. I've been seeing this more and more across the mobile web um, in the past year. Someone pointed this out, uh, my friend Jen, and she said like, oh, this site does this stupid thing, and then suddenly I see it everywhere. Um, there's a term for that, right? Um, maybe a complex, I don't know. Uh, essentially, so, so you're, you're trying to find a food review site, whatever, you hit this and it says like, oh, we don't support this orientation. Like, that's really weird, right? Because the web is, it's flexible. Um, we know how to do this stuff these days. Okay, so whatever, and it's not the end of the world. Then you turn your phone and then, and then you're really frustrated, right? This is, this is the reason why people switch web browsers, for example, because they're just like, this web browser is broken. Um, and it turns out it's not. Okay, so let's look at this bug. So window orientation is a, it's a non-standard DOM extension that I think uh, Mobile Safari invented. And it's, it's pretty cool. It'll let you know more or less what orientation is. It returns one of four values, like 90, negative 90, 180, um, negative 180, sometimes. Um, it's, it's totally buggy and not very useful, but it, it exists and there are websites that rely on it because Mobile Safari is the only mobile web browser. Um, okay, so, so let's look at this code. This is why this, this site is broken. If window.orientation does not equal zero, bad orientation, like I didn't, this is real code, I didn't write that. So we're gonna shame the orientation. Um, okay. So window.orientation does not equal zero, so we're gonna go back to JavaScript fundamentals. What happens if what value do you get if something doesn't exist? Those were all wrong. Undefined, right? That was a terribly question, uh, worded question, right? You're all right, but so am I. Um, okay, so in Firefox, window.orientation evaluates to undefined. That was the real question, because it doesn't support it. It's non-standard, and uh, maybe we should support it. I'm kind of lobbying for that, just so websites don't break. Um, but not a lot of people agree with me. So, okay, so now these are the real JavaScript fundamentals. This is why you're hired to do your job is because what is undefined does not equal zero evaluate to. Okay, very good, true, okay. So remember, if true, bad orientation, um, right, so, um, I really feel like we're judging this dog for its lifestyle choices. <laughs> and that's not acceptable. Um, I think we should be more accepting of whatever that is. Um, okay, so, uh, so that's a bug that someone write. They tested their code in their, in their iPad or their iPhone and it worked and it's awesome. And then they forgot other browsers exist, right? So part of web compatibility is, is figuring out like, okay, should we support these non-standard interfaces so content works. Like when I use Firefox for Android, I just want the site to work. I don't care that it's standard or non-standard. Or do we, do, do we fight the good fight and contact the website and get them to use um, web standards? Um, okay, so that was the DOM, and I love the DOM. Uh, so here's, here's some problems that can come up with JavaScript. Um, so this, I guess, will level up to a, to a more advanced um, type of bug, right? The DOM is pretty easy to figure out why it breaks, because it always breaks. Um, so this is, uh, has anyone here ever used Sencha Touch? 
Or is anyone here employed by Sencha? No? Awesome. Okay. Um, if you could not record the next two minutes. I'm just kidding. Um, okay, so, so this array prototype values, this is ECMAScript 6, right? You've all heard of ES6. This is the next level or version of JavaScript that we'll soon have in our browsers. Um, so one of the prototype methods to the array built in is values, and this was added in Firefox, I don't know, six months ago, a year ago, whatever it was, and suddenly someone reported a bug and they said, my bank stopped working. So that's kind of a big deal. Um, like, I can live with weird food startup site not working, but like if I can't bank online, I'm really frustrated. Um, so it turns out after doing some analysis, this is, this is the offending code with values. Um, and to understand why that breaks, uh, we have to learn a lot about JavaScript, right? So um, Douglas Crockford, I think, told us not to use with blocks. Um, Angus Kroll told us to use with blocks, um, but I don't use them because they're, they're complicated. So how this works is, um, so that values was an array that got passed into the with block, and with blocks, when they're, the object is evaluated, it goes up the scope chain looking for properties, but then it'll also go across the prototype chain or whatever, so even if there was, so now that there's all of a sudden a values object on the prototype, um, it explodes, because that's a function now and not just that object. Um, is everyone with me? Yeah. Yeah, so I, I studied this bug for my job interview and they didn't ask me about it, I was relieved. Um, so, in, so, so that totally broke, right? Weird stuff, and, and what's the solution? Like, how do you, how do you fix this problem? Like, you can't go back and change all the sites that you guys made using Sencha Touch. You probably don't even work at those jobs anymore, and you're not going to get paid by whoever paid you to build that site, and so that's just like a wart on the web platform. Um, what the TC39 guys did was they came up with some magical, unscopable uh, way to say, like, this won't exist in the scope lookup of a with block. Like, insanity, but it's... It's a good solution because it doesn't hurt any code in the past. It's going forward. It's clean. So we can work around that. Um, so this is a new bug that just came up last week with uh, Twitter.com. Ralph Holzman um, did not code this bug. Um, okay, so this is a really tricky one. And I want you to, I know you love being forced to sit and look at code you didn't write. Um, you have to try to figure out why this would explode. Right, so the method at the bottom says explode if you pass me an array. How am I going to get an array? Um, or when will f be an array? Um, and so I'm not actually gonna make you figure that out. Um, it's, it's, a, it's another ES ECMAScript 6 thing, right? So we just added in Firefox 28 array prototype entries. So let's look at the code again. So Twitter was expecting this object with an entries key to mean one thing. Um, and an array with no entries key meant another thing, and that's perfectly fine, right? That's not a bad way to write code, but all of a sudden now your array has an entries, um, that's, a, it's a truthy condition, and all of a sudden you're passing arrays into methods that expect objects, and all hell breaks loose. Um, okay, so that was ECMAScript. Um, and um, I don't remember what I was doing with this slide. <laughs> but I, I really like it when people design in pure CSS. That's the best. Um, so, so here's a fun bug, right? So these CSS bugs are, are weird and interesting, and they're kind of easy to figure out, right? So, so we know that um, developers like to code <laughs> for WebKit mobile browsers. And so if you were to look at this, what would you guess is happening? Just shout it out. Prefixes, right? Okay, that's, that's generally the, the solution to um, most mobile web compatibility issues is, is they're using some WebKit prefix, right? Um, this is what it looks like 
in iOS, or sorry, that's the Android browser. Um, yeah, so this is a, a CSS gradient that only includes the WebKit prefix, and there's no background color. So this is what you get. Um, that's maybe not an awesome experience. Um, I'm not a UX guy, but. Um, OK, so, so we actually reached out to ehow.com, and they were really cool, and they said, like, oh, I'm sorry. Um, and so they added in some uh, dash moz gradients and some prefixless gradients. Um, we maybe even recommended that they add just like a background color, right? So the, the people on old browsers can see stuff that's cool. And so this is what it looks like today, and it's kind of fixed. Um, it introduced another problem, which this one's a little harder to spot. Um, but if you look at the, the icons, like the, the home mom style buttons, like the backgrounds are a little off. Um, and it turned out, so okay, let's, let's go back and, and check it out. It turns out they're using this other non-standard thing, background position Y and X. Um, and I was gonna ask you, like, which CSS3 spec is this in? And you all would not know because it's not in any CSS3 spec. Um, this was something that Internet Explorer, I believe, invented, and then WebKit added for web compatibility. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's a step closer to the right direction. Um, so um, 302 is a great status code, right? So, so let's look at some HTTP bugs. Um, this one's really fun. So bad behavior is, is a status. Um, Someone reported that whenever they hit this website in their Firefox browser, it returned 403 bad behavior, right? Which is like bad orientation. It's really judgmental. Um, so that's weird. And so we did a little bit of analysis, like why Firefox 25? And so let's, let's make these requests to the server using different user agent strings. Um, can anyone spot the pattern? 25, right? Like somehow Gecko 25 is bad behavior. Um, we don't know why. Like maybe there was like one hacker <laughs> who used for Firefox 25, right? So um, strange HTTP bug. Um, I guess maybe that's a UA sniffing bug, but um, okay. So. So that was just kind of a sample of like, like the ambulance, like we're just watching car crashes and like, whoa, that's really funny. Um, as one does. All right. Okay, so, so you, you're feeling a little ripped off. You're like, I came to jQuery conference, not what does Mike Taylor do for a living conference. Um, so what I've talked about up to this point was really from the point of view of a browser vendor, right? Like I work for Mozilla, we make Firefox web browsers. Um, they're pretty great. Um, I used to work for Opera, and they make other web browsers that are also cool. Um, but what about you guys, right? You guys are web authors. You're creating content. Um, and so you, you're not really going to ever hit the, the bad behavior bug in your framework. Um, and you're not really going to, I mean, you could, you could accidentally make some of these mistakes, but by and large, you're, you've got different concerns, right? Um, arguably, you care that the people who come to your sites have working, you know, websites. Um, so it turns out you might not need jQuery, um, which, so, so what was this, like a week ago? Um, has someone already made this joke, by the way? I feel like we're at the end of the conference, and this was like low-hanging fruit. Um, maybe a week ago, some um, people wrote this, and it, it was an interesting exercise, and people got really angry and went to Hacker News and did whatever they do over there. Um, but it's been done before, right? Like, this was not an original thought that like, hey, web browsers are modern, right? So like, this was a website they also wrote. You, you might not need penicillin. Um, you might not need the internal combustion engine. Like, you really don't need it. Alex wrote that joke. Um, that's right, Steam, right? Like, you can get the job done with Steam. Um, you don't need pistons or whatever. Uh, okay, so, so that's an interesting point of view. Uh, you might not need facts. Um, so, so this is a cool file that you can visit. 
So Rick Waldron, um, who is prone to anger, right? He saw this, uh, this website and was furious. And so he wrote a script that, um, so he, there's this link to a gist up at the top. And he basically went through jQuery 2, right? Does everyone know what the difference is between 1x and 2x? Um, I won't ask you to raise your hand if you don't know, because you'll, you'll be really embarrassed, right? So the jQuery 1x branch is like maximum backwards compatibility support. Like we're supporting IE6 and 7 um, and other kinds of weird browsers. The jQuery 2x branch is modern browsers for some value of modern, I don't even know. Um, so Rick, he said, this is not true. Let's look at the jQuery 2, the modern browser branch, and let's look at and find all of the bugs that jQuery is working around. Um, so it turns out even though you use Chrome 27 or I use Firefox 27, um, there's actually bugs in them. Um, so we're not going to, there's too much detail here, but like as this scrolls by, like feel really impressed or something, right? So, so here's a ton of bugs, like um, here's some presto issue. I don't know. So, so Rick went through, and, and uh, a colleague of mine, Boris Barsky, um, and some other people, John David Dalton from Microsoft and Paul Irish, they kind of compiled and, and went through and looked at all these problems. So um, in reality, you kind of do need jQuery, right? Um, and so it's, it's, my, it's my opinion that we should all be using jQuery because it works. Um, and it makes my job a lot easier to know that like, okay, this site is broken, okay, they're using jQuery, let's look elsewhere before we, we dig through like your homebrew um, DOM framework. Um, so, okay, so now you're saying to yourself like, wow, I f I'm really moved by Mike's talk. Um, I get that. Um, so how can I help, right? So if, if web compatibility is interesting to you, um, you, can, you can join us at Mozilla. You can contribute to these efforts. Um, but more importantly, I, I, I didn't update this on my slide, but there's a website called webcompat.com, which we're building right now. It's ugly because I'm not a designer. Um, and I'm like super literal and open, can openers somehow make sense. Um, but, th but this is something that we're working on where people can go to learn about web compatibility um, and you can open a bug on any browser. Um, you can open a bug on any website and um, hopefully the web won't suck so much. Um, so I'm just gonna sit here for a minute. Right. Thank you. 